Hello everyone and welcome to a video that I'm excited to do. It's gonna be a little bit different than normal here. I have been seeing, like I'm sure a lot of you have been seeing, the assumptions videos going around on YouTube making their rounds where basically the content creator slash YouTuber asks you all to send your assumptions about them. What do you assume about me? Things about me outside of YouTube or for YouTube, just what do you think about me? I think it'll be interesting to see what you guys have to say. I have read some of them already. I asked about a week ago now, I believe. So I've given ample time and yeah, I read some of the assumptions and uh... <sighs> some of you are spot on. <laughs> embarrassing for me, but uh, is spot on. And then also I thought just to make this a little more interesting on the side of the screen, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do these nails because so many of you really wanted to know how I did them. There are so many tutorials online though that I felt like not good at making just a video on its own about how to do rose quartz nails. I originally posted a picture on Instagram and that's where loads and loads and loads of you were like, um, we need a tutorial. And I'm like, I would love to, but I feel like, like I said, it's been done before. So either way, I'm going to be talking you through how to do these nails. This is my second time doing them because I didn't film a tutorial when I did them the first time, but you guys want a tutorial. So this is basically all of February. I'm doing this manicure apparently, <laughs> but that's fine. I think they're so and they just go with anything and yeah so basically to start i guess here we go here's the here's the tutorial do your typical routine with your nails i have already you know clipped my cuticles and pushed them back i suppose pushed them back and clipped them and everything before the video so do your nail prep whatever you need to do wash your hands make sure they're nice and clean and your nails are ready to take on some polish then i go ahead and use my favorite base coat it is zoya's anchor base coat. It is perfection to me. I really, really love it. I've been using it for years. So just go ahead, put that on, and that that is that. Oh my god, I just checked. 193 assumptions on my community tab anyways, and then I've got quite a few on Twitter as well. I don't know, in my head I thought this video was gonna flow a lot better between doing the nails and also doing these assumptions. I'm sorry, this is probably all over the place, but Haley Marie says that she assumes that I have a great but dirty sense of humor that I don't show enough of on my YouTube channel. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think I'm funny. <laughs> like, I think everyone thinks they're funny. I also realize that I'm also really, like, not funny and I'm the only one that thinks I'm funny. Like, that sort of a thing in a lot of situations. But, like I said, I, I, I like to make people laugh. I like to make people smile. So I would like to think that I'm, like, decently funny. Uh, but either way, uh, do I have a dirty sense of humor? I don't know, maybe. I, no more so than the normal person, but yeah. I try to keep it clean anyways on YouTube for the most part because of uh, monetization and also I like to try and keep things family friendly for those of you who have kids around when you're watching my videos, but Jeannie says that she assumes I have some deep pain. I cover it with laughter and jokes. Some people misunderstand, but it's just a way of coping. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, girl. Ugh. You cut so deep, you understand so deep. But yeah, yeah, that's uh, it's one of those things where, you know, with life, I've come to learn or find that it's my favorite way of coping because like life just sucks mostly in general and I'd rather laugh about the sucky parts than cry and be upset about them. You get what I'm saying? So, eh, you know, it is what it is. And then going back to the nails, next step is to take a sheer pink polish. I will have, you know, products and stuff in the description below, but I am using all Essie nail colors. I used to hate Essie nail polish. Um, They're one of my favorite nail polishes now. They have gotten much better over the years, but uh, yeah, just a sheer, you need a sheer baby pink polish and just lay down a nice coat of that for the base of your nails. Strawberry quartz. Have you ever tried saying your username? That's a tongue twister. You say that you assume I'm the mom of my friend group? I honestly have no idea. I don't think so. I mean, I like to take care of people and like take care of my friends, but I don't know that I would consider myself the mom. 
I, I really don't know though. Master Warden assumes that if any of you all saw me in public and said you were a casserole family member, you would treat us so kindly and possibly go to lunch with you. Probably, yeah. I mean, of course, I'm always like, I shouldn't say of course, but like whenever any of you come say hi to me out in public, it is like the best thing ever. I love getting to meet you guys and say hello and give you a hug if possible, like if that feels like a comfortable natural thing. Um, I try and, you know, feel it out. If you look like you don't want to be touched, I'm not gonna touch you. <laughs> but yeah, I love being able to talk to you guys out in public, saying hello, seeing your faces, and I mean, I don't, I don't know that I would like go out to lunch with you, but I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to it. I just feel like that might be a little strange. Like, hi, nice to meet you. Oh, that's so great. Thanks for saying hi. You want to grab a meal? I know it's like 3 p.m. and you probably already ate lunch, but like, lunchtime? You know, it would it would all depend. Mandy Girl 2341 says that I'm an old soul who listens to records and has old fashioned skills such as sewing and crocheting. Um, no, I mean, I am, I do consider myself an old soul. I really have always felt like I've been 80 years old in terms of my likes and stuff and just temperament, but I do not own a record player. I don't have records. Most of my music is electronic now, you know, not even, I got rid of all my CDs when I moved here because they just turned into clutter. I actually don't know how to crochet, but I do love sewing. I have done lots of cross stitch. I, you know, hem a lot of my clothes because I'm real short, so I gotta hem my pants and you know I love fixing up clothes and stuff just like hand sewing and doing embroidery and that sort of stuff so uh in that sense yes yes you got that one right Miguel I can't tell if you're a troll or not but uh I'll answer this anyways because I feel like some people did say this you say I assume your mom lied on the doctors about not knowing about my disorder till she saw it on YouTube I don't know maybe it was just the way that that doctor's episode was edited or whatever but my mom actually didn't say that or that's not what she was referencing. She knew about my disorder. She has always known about it. It's that she didn't know about my methods of my disorder, like using things like knives from the kitchen and stuff to pick at my skin. That's what she meant. She had no idea. So now with the nails, once you have that first coat of polish down, let it dry and everything to avoid getting bubbles. And now the fun part is that you're going to take a white polish. Again, I'm using Essie and I think the name of it is Blanc, but you just want an opaque white polish. And then I used a very thin uh, crafting brush, I guess you could call it. You know, you can go to Michael's or even at Target, I'm sure, and just go to like the little kids crafting section and buy really cheap brushes. That's at least what I do. And then just get the white polish on there and you're just gonna paint little abstract lines going across your nails. They don't have to be perfect or even look good because that's the point of this. We're getting some marbling down and making it look all cool. So you're gonna want to do all of those and you know you don't have to worry about whether it's dry or not but after that you are going to take some 100% pure acetone and you are going to use a paintbrush again and dip that in the acetone and then rub it along one of the sides of the white line that you put down and you're just gonna start blurring it and it's a real fun process it's nice and uh, cathartic would that be I mean at least if you enjoy doing nail art or any kind of art I would think it would be fun for you but that's that's it that's what you're gonna be doing Stephanie says I assume that you like old-fashioned things like vintage type things antiques you also assume I like like old school music from the 80s and 90s, even old school hip hop. Oh, oh heck yes I do. Especially with the old school hip hop. I love just rap, R&B, hip hop, that sort of a thing. Especially from like, you know, the Tupac and Biggie era. So, you know, kind of 90s. Yeah, I would say that was the 90s, wasn't it? Early 2000s. Either way, love, love, and yes, I love old music too. Like Queen, I love Led Zeppelin, I love Pink Floyd, Nirvana, Foo Fighters, and I like newer music too. Like I love the Gorillas, I love Little Dragon. Uh, you know, there's a there's so many Jason Mraz. My musical taste is kind of all over the place, but definitely old school stuff is a favorite too. Anne Met S. I I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but you assume that I am a hardworking woman. I always have been. I'm smart and intelligent because of that, and I think I also don't realize how amazing I am in terms of. My dating life, you think I deserve the world at my itty bitty paw feet's hug from Denmark. 
thank you. I hadn't read that one yet, but thanks. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I'm very hardworking. I also think I work too much, but I enjoy working. I like feeling useful. So it's a, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, I guess, in that sense. Um, whether I'm intelligent or not, I don't, I don't know. I, I like learning. I'll definitely say that much. And I don't, I don't know about giving myself not enough credit for in terms of my dating life, knowing how amazing I am, that sort of a thing. At this point, I'm just taking it all as a joke. I just don't care anymore. I'm back into that sort of a thing where I just, whatever. I'm happy being with me because that's, that's the one thing I can count on is that I'll always be here for me. So I may as well just go back to being happy and satisfied with just that. Anyways, uh, with the nail polish, going back to that, uh, once you have done the white striping and done the acetone on that, I am also just taking a little makeup applicator sponge. This, again, you can find at Target and that sort of a thing. And I am painting on kind of a dusty rosy pink color. Again, this is from Essie. What is, is it called? Eternal Opt- Again, I'll have all all the names and stuff of the products down below but I'm just painting that onto the sponge and then dabbing that randomly across my nails this will just add some depth to things and then again you are going to want to wait until that and the white ends up drying and once those things have dried you can go ahead and put on another coat of the light pink from the first step or I guess the second step after the base coat and then you're just repeating the process letting that dry and then doing the striping again. You're not doing another uh, dabbing of the darker pink, at least the second time I didn't, but you're doing another random white striping and acetoning that, and that is going to help to create a lot of the layer. Ooh, Leather and Jade Art says, I assume you are reincarnated from a fabulous 1920s flapper. I cannot confirm or deny that. But hey, uh, okay. And Angie assumes that I like pineapple on my pizza. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> For life. It's probably actually my favorite pizza topping aside from just normal cheese. Miss Misto says that I am not really into making YouTube videos anymore. The passion has died, novelty is long gone, and you're not even as into makeup, and I hate the trolls. But I keep moving forward by telling myself it's better than a regular 9 to 5 job. Mostly this is very incorrect. Um, the only things, I guess, I do hate the trolls. I mean, I don't hate them. They're more annoying than anything. I do think this is better than a nine to five job, at least for me and what I enjoy doing with my time. I mean, hobby turned career, that's like everyone's dream, right? So I feel very, very lucky to have this as my job and I love it. I still love making YouTube videos. I mean, sure, the novelty is gone in the sense that this isn't just a hobby for me anymore and I do do this in order to keep a roof over my head and food in my kitchen type of thing, keep my cats happy. And yeah, same thing with like, you're not as into makeup anymore. I get that all the time too. Like, I still love makeup. I would say, you know, it's surely, it's not as exciting anymore in the sense that like, I don't have to, save up all my pennies while I'm in grad school and like I get to treat myself to one makeup item a month type of a thing. So it's not exciting in that sense and that I'm not as excited in purchasing the makeup and stuff anymore, but I still love testing it with you guys. I still love being able to show you how things work on me and talk to you guys about these products and editing videos is my jam. It's like even when I go and sit down and I'm like, okay, time to relax. I go to edit a video. <laughs> like, sometimes it does feel like work, but a lot of times it's like, well, what else am I gonna do? I just enjoy editing videos, I really do, so. Brittany assumes that I am an empathetic person to a fault to the point that I am highly sensitive to others' emotions and they sometimes project on you. P.S. This happens to me frequently. P.S.S. I love you. Thank you, Brittany! That's so sweet. The loving me part. I mean, I guess thinking that I'm empathetic is also a sweet thing, because, I, I mean, right? I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, I am definitely to a fault. I am the type of person where it's like, even if I have no idea who the person is on TV or on the news or like even in a comment and someone tells me, hey, so-and-so close to me died, I'll just start crying. I 
I hate it, but at the same time, it's like I'm glad that I feel things, especially feel things for others. Um, but yeah, it can certainly be to a fault because then you do, you can tend to internalize some things and you end up taking on other people's moods a lot of the time, uh, which can be a good thing. Like if they're in a good mood, but if they're in a bad mood, then it can turn into a bad thing. And yeah, that sort of, yeah, yeah. You get it. <laughs> Brittany says, I assume you put everything into a relationship when it's still in the early stages like plan for the future with someone before they're ready and try to always have a person instead of being alone. I remind you of one of your closest friends who relies very heavily on male attention. This could not be farther from the truth. Like the most far from the truth. First off, I don't get into relationships often. I've only had a couple or a few, I guess, in my lifetime. You no, know, I've been on more than a few dates, but like have a real relationship type of thing. And for me, being almost 30, like, that is, that's very little, I feel like, compared to a lot of people. I did not, I just, I, I don't date often. I really don't. And I absolutely, I put, like, the lowest expectations on things, you know, before someone's ready or not. I don't know. But, like, the future, me, like, planning for the future is just, like, when will I see you next? In a week? Great! You know, like that's as much future planning as I do because for me in my brain, I have, I would say, abandonment issues. Sure, I guess that's kind of how it would probably be classified. So for me, anyone I meet or get into a relationship, friendship with, anything like that, in the base of my mind, I'm always like, enjoy it while you can because sooner rather than later, this person's gonna abandon you and leave you just out of the blue. So like, I don't plan for the future with people, <laughs> like I said, except for, you know, the immediate future. I also, in terms of just like growing up and seeing others around me, I am so not wanting or needing a man's attention or, you know, anything to make me feel good about myself or feel valid or worth it or whatever. Like, I've just always seen that with other people and like hated it. So I've always made it so that I don't feel that way. Like, I just don't. Sure, it's nice to have, like, someone you're attracted to or someone you like think that you look good as well, and that's great, but, like, I don't need that at all. <laughs> I also don't always try to have a person instead of being alone. Like, I, I would say it's the opposite. <laughs> I try and be more alone than I try to have a person. <laughs> It's, it's, I'm laughing because it's actually sad saying that out loud, I feel like. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I'm just, I'm happy being alone. And like I said, I would rather be alone because then the only thing that can disappoint me is myself, you know, instead of, you know, another person, which I can never fully 100% rely on because people are fickle in nature and, you know, people change and that sort of a thing. So yeah, I'm sorry, but your, your assumption is very off. That's okay. You're allowed to assume these things. It's just, I'm just here to tell you that. Um, and then going back to the nails, I guess. Like I said, you're repeating the steps. So doing the stripes again, the white stripes and the acetone. And then on top of that, once that has dried, then you're doing another coat of the sheer pink. And that's what gets you the beautiful, lovely stone type of a layered look. It's a lot of layers of polish. It really is. But oh, it is so pretty and dreamy. At least I think so. And then of course, afterwards, you can go ahead and clean up with some nail polish remover around your nail. Also put on a nice, nice thick gloopy coat of top coat. I am a Sesh Viet fan. It just works real good for me. And that is that, you guys. That is the finished look. Now, continuing on with assumptions. Again, I'm sorry. I don't know why I thought it would be a good idea to combine these videos, but there you go. Those are the nails. Now, back to more assumptions. Stephanie says, you assume that I say words that could make a sailor blush? Uh... I don't know what words would make a sailor blush. Maybe in bed, a little dirty talk, never hurt anyone, right? <laughs> Oh my god, my mom watches my videos. Uh, Rebecca says, I assume you secretly eat nothing but junk food when no one is home, but I eat super healthy when anyone else is around. You probably have a secret Coca-Cola and chocolate stash. Um, partially yes, partially no. Uh, I don't have a secret Coca-Cola stash. I don't have pop in my house ever or soda, depending on where you live. I have, you know, like uh, LaCroix. That's my drink of choice. Other than water, I drink tons and tons of water. The only time I drink pop is like if I go to a restaurant or if I'm at my mom's house, which is once a week. So I have one can of pop a week, pretty much. 
But the chocolate stash, oh, oh, I have a chocolate stash. It's just, it's not a secret. <laughs> I, I have a sweet tooth. I rarely, if ever, go a day without eating chocolate. It's probably a problem. Uh, also, I eat nothing but junk food when I'm alone. That's not true. Uh, but I do, I do, now this is getting more into the fact that I have lived with an eating disorder most of my life. Um, and eating healthy in front of other people, yes, that is a huge thing that was very linked to my eating disorder when that was like really bad because it's hard enough being the fat girl and then you eat something not healthy in front of other people because then they're like, wow, you really shouldn't be eating that type of thing. So then you're like, okay, I guess I'm gonna eat nothing but vegetables. But then people anyways are like, wow, like way to try and fake us by trying to eat vegetables in front of us we know you don't eat these normally otherwise you wouldn't be fat and it just it's a large cycle but no I eat generally pretty healthy and I have tried like working on you know with my eating disorders and stuff like I am better about doing a healthy balance I would say in front of other people. Cassidy assumes that I am not a drama llama. I don't know what a I mean drama llama is that just like I mean obviously it rhymes. I don't know if a drama llama has like more of a meaning than like someone who enjoys drama type of thing. You are correct in the sense that I hate drama in my life. I love drama on TV. Like, love it. You know, any type of reality trashy TV show, I am there, I am down. I love that kind of fake orchestrated drama, like dramatic drama for no reason drama type of drama. But in my life, get away from me, I want nothing to do with it. <laughs> like, I hate drama in my real life, be it with me, with my friends, anyone else, I don't want it near me just on my TV screen. Lacey assumes that I go the extra mile for just about anybody and don't give up on people. I have a huge heart and love to please people. Yes, yes, and yes, yes, yes. Um, like I said earlier, I sometimes think I try too hard with people sometimes and I don't give up soon enough when it comes to certain things. Like, I don't know, I guess it really is situational, but in my head, I'm like, fool me once, shame on me, fool me twice, shame on you, or no, other way around, right? <laughs> Either way, I like to say, I'll give you a second chance, but never a third. I feel like it's often more rare that I'll, that, yeah, I, I probably give people too many chances sometimes, but for the most part, I like to think, I don't know, you guys. <laughs> I guess I like to hope that people are good. That's my thing. And so I'd like to think no matter how many times someone has repeated the same thing over and over again, if they say they're gonna change, I like to hope that they're gonna change, but I guess I don't expect for them to. Does that make sense? And the same thing with the whole abandonment thing. It's like, I guess I just assume everyone's gonna abandon me eventually anyways. <sighs> so I like to please the people that I have around while I can. <sighs> Brianna says that she assumes that I'm super silly when I go out with friends, lots of random dance breaks. You assume we'd get along great. That could be that we would get along great. And heck yes. I mean, I love to just, if I'm going out with friends, I want to have a fun time. You know what I mean? And random dance breaks. Oh yes. Oh yes. Especially with one of my friends, uh, one of my best friends at the time anyways, uh, especially in high school, we would have random dance breaks all the time, especially to the Tarzan soundtrack. Put some Phil Collins on, Son of Man. Oh, you wanna get amped? You want a random dance break? That's the song to do it to. Dude, some of these assumptions are just harsh. Laura assumes that I'm extremely broke slash in debt. I mean, ouch, yeah, you're right. <laughs> like, I think anyone who did college and then grad school right in succession, right one after the other, I think most of us in those situations are extremely in debt. Um, but I'm working on it. Like, I always pay my payments on time and stuff. It means I'm broke in the sense that even though I, like, have money in my bank account, I feel like it's not really mine because it all just ends up going to pay off my debts anyways, but, uh... Ouch. Christy assumes that I was an advanced reader and spent a lot of my childhood reading long chapter books. You would be 100% correct on that. I mean, even in like first grade and stuff, me and one other kid were in the advanced reading. And actually in first grade anyways, it was my mom that came in once a week and would pull us aside and we would read chapter books and stuff while other people or the other kids were not quite at that level yet. And uh, 
uh, yeah, I, I always, yeah, I guess I've been an advanced reader for a long time. I just, I really love reading. I guess I blame my mom because my mom has always loved reading. So it just kind of rubbed off on me. I suppose I should really switch on over to Twitter here because I have been neglecting it. Carrie assumes that I'm extremely smart and want to quit YouTube and use my degree to its fullest, but I'm afraid to start it because I like the creative outlet YouTube gives me. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know on this assumption whether it's correct or not. Um, again, am I extremely smart? I don't know. Uh, I don't think so. I, I personally think I'm not smart, uh, but that's, that probably has a lot to do with other things. Um, <laughs> Uh, wanting to quit YouTube is incorrect. I do not want to quit YouTube at all. I think about it like what would I do if I didn't have YouTube? I would be lost. <laughs> like real, real lost. Um, I'm certainly, I wouldn't say I'm afraid to use my degree, but I do have hang-ups going into the art world and stuff. Just after getting my fine arts master's degree, um, just, you know, delving into the art world more, it's gross. I don't like it. I don't like the culture that it is right now. I don't like the climate that it's in. And so I just don't know that I want to dive into that. But I have thought about thinking, I've thought about thinking about doing art here on YouTube a bit, testing those waters. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see where things go in the future though. I like this username, feisty old broad. <laughs> you assume that I'm very careful letting people in once so I do, once I do though, I truly do have them in my heart. I would say so. This definitely links back to the abandonment issues. Um, I, I have a really hard time letting people in. Like I don't mind letting people in on a surface level, like at all. But deeper than that, it takes me some time. Lola thinks I feel alienated from the rest of the YouTube YouTube community. Yeah, at times. Yeah. I mean, I just I just think I do things differently than most of the beauty community, and um, that can definitely lead me to feel alienated. But. I, wouldn't, I don't know that I would necessarily say it's in a bad way or anything, but yeah, I, I do sometimes feel like I'm not a part of things. Sky Pirates assumes that I used to write fan fiction, but I definitely read it. Um, well, I have never written fan fiction, but I do read it, or I have read it, slash every now and then I'll dive back into like fan fiction sites and stuff and just laugh like so much of it is just so bad <laughs> like if any of you write fan fiction out there like i'm not trying to like make you feel bad or anything like some of it is really good some of it really actually is there are some talented writers out there but some of it is just so cringy it's so cringy so if I ever need a really good laugh, I will. I'll, I'll go and read some fan fiction. And yeah, lots of assumptions about me getting good grades all the time in school. Yes, to a fault. I would say that I stressed myself out way too much, but I have always been a straight A student. And a lot of these assumptions are, you know, the same, just in that you guys think I'm a really nice person and like that I'm pretty and that I deserve a lot. And like, uh... <sighs> self-love, self-love. I don't think I deserve things, but I really appreciate that you guys think I do. I appreciate that a lot of you think that I'm a hard worker because I am, and I just, I appreciate the crap out of you guys. Uh, it's, it's been really fun reading through your assumptions. I haven't even read through all of them, but I've been filming for an hour now, <laughs> so I have no idea how this is gonna get edited down or how long this video is gonna be. Let me know if you want to see more videos like this minus the nail tutorial. I'm sorry I threw that in, but I wanted, again, I just just want to make everyone happy. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who sent in assumptions to me. I'm sorry I was not able to get to everybody. There were a lot more than I expected. Did you have the same assumptions as some of the ones that I featured here in this video? Do you have other assumptions? Let me know in the comments down below. I do, when I say I love hearing from you guys, I really do. I love hearing from you. You can also let me know if you enjoyed the video by giving me a thumbs up down below. I would really appreciate it. And if you are new here, hey, hi. Hello, how are you? You can go ahead and subscribe. You can become a member of my casserole family here on my channel. Hit that notification bell. I'd love to have you here. And as always, I just hope you guys are all doing well. Until next time, just stay well until then. Bye. <laughs>
So <laughs> these are just <laughs> savage. There are also so many people that like well, assume that I'm really sad. <laughs> like, hate my life. Uh, 